Minister, we've got Mr. Ebonlu Adigboro, our Senior Advocate of Nigeria, joining us this morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today on the program. Well, we heard the Minister of Police Affairs just explaining why uh, the extension of the IGP by the President had to happen. They need time uh, to ensure that they have the right persons there and ensure things work properly, smooth handover. So uh, just trying to let people know that they not just there to do things blatantly, but the reasons he had used. Does that sit with you, notwithstanding? Uh, good morning, Chebalin and uh, viewers. Uh, I have listened to the reasons profiled by the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs on behalf of the President uh, on why Mr. Muhammad Adamu uh, is to remain in office as the Inspector General of Police. I think generally uh, there is a desire uh, to ensure that there must be some kind of seamless transition in any official position, not just for the IGP, but other desirable positions of public office holders. But if you recall that Mr. Adamo was appointed on the 15th of January 2019 as Inspector General of Police, the 20th in the series. So I, I believe that uh, the president had enough time uh, because he was aware that his tenure uh, was going to expire on February and that he will have attained 35 years of service in the force by February 1, having enlisted in the Nigerian police force in 1986. So his public records are in the public domain. It's on Wikipedia. You just Google, you will be able to get the record of the uh, Inspector General of Police. He's 59 years of age. You know, and the law says that, I mean, for a person who is an officer in the Nigeria police force, I'm, and I'm referring to Section 18, uh, sub 8 of the Police Act that the President signed by himself on the 13th of September 2020. That law says that any officer of the Nigeria Police Force can only serve for 35 years mandatory period of service or when he attains the age of 60, whichever is earlier. So in this case, the mandatory period of service came earlier than uh, the 60 years uh, of the Inspector General of Police. So the law takes the 35 years that he has rendered meritoriously to the Nigeria Police Force uh, as being the time when he should vacate office. So I do not agree that the need for uh, seamless transition should warrant uh, the reason for somebody whose tenure has expired to remain in office. And in any way, Chebalin, for you to do anything that relates to the office of the Inspector General of Police, you must follow due process. There is a procedure stipulated by law for the appointment of the Inspector General of Police, and that is in Section 216 of the Police Act. And it's very clear that it's only a member of the Nigeria Police Force that can be appointed as Inspector General of Police, not just a member, but a serving member. So by February 1, 2021, the Mr. Mohamed Adamo ceased to be a member of the Nigeria Police Force, having served that five years in, uh, in that uh, uh, organization. So there is no basis, there's no foundation to bring him back through the back door to extend a tenure that has expired. And in any case, if you look at your tenancy agreement or lease agreement or any document of property that is subject to renewal, you give notice of renewal before the expiration of the tenure. So assuming that it's even possible to extend the tenure of a serving inspector general of police, that extension will only happen during the subsistence or validity of the tenure itself. So once you wait for the tenure to expire, there's no basis, there's no foundation for the extension. And like I've explained practically I mean, yesterday, you can only extend what exists. There is no law empowering the president to extend the tenure of 
an inspector general of police that has expired. And so I believe that when you do something that is wrong, you cannot seek for right motive to justify it. So with due respect to the Honorable Minister of uh, Police Affairs, you would not use exigency as a reason to perpetrate illegality. What has happened is clearly unconstitutional. The president swore to uphold the constitution, and that is what we hold him to, and he has to obey the constitution. So it's not that we don't like Mr. Adamu, having served in the police for 35 years, without any query, without any dent on his image, he should be allowed to take a meritorious uh, exit without any controversy. You know, and if you look at the police force, in all the units, AIGs, DIGs, you can't say you can't have somebody you can appoint in acting capacity for an interim period until you can convey the uh, proper meeting of the Nigerian Police Council, who would then advise having interviewed all the existing officers that are qualified for that position. So certainly it cannot be the case that there is nobody among the serving AIGs, among the serving DIGs, that should qualify to hold that office for an interim period of one month or three months or for however, however long the president wants to cite for a suitable person. Right. It is totally embarrassing, if I must say. Right. I mean, and it's all the more important to follow the law because this is a law enforcement agency. This is an agency tasked with the responsibility of upholding the law. But you also said that, I mean, waiting till his tenure expired before extending that tenure by uh, three months, I mean, is an illegality. Is there, is there any, uh, I mean, is there any instance maybe that this can be legal? Is there any instance? When you say that something is legal, it means that there is a backing for it in law. We can search for statutes here and there. And when we want to do that, we'll look at the enabling statute, applicable statute that regulates that office. In this case, we have recourse to the Constitution and also to the Police Act. And like I've explained, the basis of the existence of the office of the IG is created by the Constitution in Section 215 which says that there shall be an inspector general of police to be appointed by the president upon the advice of the Nigeria Police Council. And such person should be picked from among seven officers of the Nigeria Police Force. So when we leave that, we can then go to the police act to search for the definition or the tenor or the appointment or recruitment of the office of the inspector general of police. Uh, and, and that is clearly stated that such a person uh, should be appointed on the advice of the Nigerian Police Council. Now, the Police Council is established under paragraph 27 of the third schedule to the 1999 Constitution as an organization that is responsible for advising the president on the organization of the police and the appointment or removal of the Inspector General of Police. That organization is in existence. Its membership includes the president himself, who is the chairman, all the governors of the states of the federation are members of the Nigerian Police Council. The chairman of the Police Service Commission is a member. And then the inspector general of police himself, when he's still in office, he should be a member. In this age of technology, it shouldn't be difficult for the president to summon uh, an online or virtual meeting of the Nigerian Police Council to seek their advice. And what the law says is an advice, which is not binding on him. It was just to put to be a complimentary opportunity for him to tap knowledge from the governors who are the chief security officers of their states, tap knowledge from the chairman of the police service commission who is responsible for the recruitment promotion of officers of the Nigerian police force. So they will look at the rank and file and be able to advise the president to shortlist some names for his uh, uh, choice. But not having done that, there's no basis at all, either for the appointment of an acting inspector general or for the purported extension of the tenure of the retired inspector general of police, because that is the rank of Mr. Mohamed Adamu now. As of today, he has retired. And having retired, for you to be able to bring him back into the force, he has to reapply. He has to go for training at the police college. He has to go through promotion before he will become an AIG or a DIG. 
you know, so you, you don't just do things whimsically according to how a president wakes up or what he thinks, with all due respect to Mr. President. And I appreciate the challenges he may be having, having just replaced the other service chiefs in the armed forces, in the army, in the navy, and the air force. But I think we do things according to law. And by now, the president, you appreciate that Nigerians want him to always follow the due process of law. So answering your question, there's no other platform we can go to. There's no other venue we can go to to search for laws to uh, justify the illegal extension Mm. of the tenor of an um, inspector general of police that has retired. You know, you, you, you referred to the service chiefs as well, and a lot of people are saying, well, a similar thing played out with the service chiefs. I mean, there were a lot of people that said that they were due for retirement anyway, but the president still held on to them. So is this any different? And some are saying, well, if you didn't maybe take this to court then, so maybe this would fly as well. Well, you see, the problem is that in a nation that is governed by democracy, we have conventions, we have practices that we cherish to oil the will of democracy. And that is to respect institutions and laws. I mean, look at what is happening in America, where institutions that are established by law defended the constitution and defended the country. And that's what should happen here. Our institutions should be more than individuals. With all due respect to Mr. Mohamed Adamu, who has performed so gallantly, with all respect to him for the period for which he has had office as the Inspector General of Police, I don't think we can say that if he leaves the office, the Nigerian police force as an entity will collapse. And so we cannot come back to justify uh, the extension of his tenure with what happened to the service chiefs. As a matter of fact, I think that with what we read yesterday about the alleged appointment of the service chiefs into non-career ambassadorial positions, it's just clear that the, the president is not having the benefit of, uh, with, will I say, proper legal counsel, with all due respect. Because, you know, these are people that have just been uh, uh, relieved of their office. And packages were announced as to how many cars they were to be entitled to, medical benefits, uh, they are to go with their uniform, with their rifles, all manner of uh, uh, monetary packages. So I, I believe that for us as individuals, we should honor the laws that regulate the institutions and not continue to observe them in violation. And so my own counsel to the president, with all due respect, is that the fact that no court action uh, was instituted in respect of the uh, service chiefs in the armed forces shouldn't be a basis for replicating that unconstitutionality for other offices, especially with regard to the security situation in the country now. You know, because the consequence of this is that, you know, you, you then weaken morale. You know, because when somebody is occupying office illegally, it has to do with the capacity to pass decisions and enforce them. How to inspire people to believe that beyond the announcement by the president. There is a law backing up that office. And once there so, is no such law, even if the person is staying there, it's difficult for people to respect his decisions and his actions. You know, two, two things come up there. Uh, first is that, I mean, people have been thinking about that as well because the vice president is there, is a professor of law, senior advocate of Nigeria, the attorney general, senior advocate of Nigeria, the Minister of State for Labor, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, and then you just think, oh, wait a minute, how come? You know, these things are still observed in the breach as you're pointing out. And then secondly, does that then mean that whatever he does in office now, having the benefit of these three months in office, will it be legal since it's uh, by law is not supposed to be there, as you say? Well, uh, you know that we say it in law that you cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stand. It must collapse. Ex nihilo nihil fit. Whatever has no basis or foundation cannot stand. So in that regard, I believe that from February 1, uh, midnight, uh, Mr. Mohamed Adamu ceases to be a member of the Nigerian police force. And if he's not a serving member of the police force, he has no basis to be appointed as the Inspector General of Police, either for three months or for one day. So as we speak this morning, the Federal Republic of Nigeria has no 
Inspector General of Police, properly so recognized by law. But I have spoken by law. That's the jury. But in fact, it's possible for the president to retain anybody in whatever capacity as the uh, commander-in-chief of the armed forces as he pleases him, with all due respect. But when we say legality, it has to do with enforcement. It has to do with the regard we have to decisions that are to be taken by the person occupying that office. How does he appoint people? How does he promote people? How does he preside over meetings of the board of the Nigeria Police Force? How does he earn salary? I mean, where, does he, where, where will he draw his allowances from the Consolidated Revenue Fund or from the Revenue uh, Allocation and uh, Fiscal Commission? Where hmm. does he get paid? Okay. You know? So and then yeah. secondly, on to the other issue that you raised about uh, senior advocates serving uh, 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 with, the, with the president. Like I told you, uh, the Nigeria Police Service Commission has the responsibility to advise the president concerning the appointment or removal of an IGP. All the persons you've mentioned are not statutory members of that organization, even though they are available to advise the president. But we cannot hold them accountable since the law does not give them that responsibility mm. uh, to so advise. Well, you, you said just, just a little while ago, you said that as commander-in-chief of the armed forces, the president may have the authority to retain anyone in office beyond time. That's, you know, I mean, that's what he just said now. Wouldn't that, is there a law that backs up that? And wouldn't that be the premise upon which the president is standing then? No, I, we hold the president by his declaration. When a person has on his own declared the basis of the decision, we cannot be searching for an alternative. The minister, Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, spoke on behalf of the president and said, the reason for this extension is that the president wants to be able to get a suitable replacement and is looking for enough time to search for, you know. And, and that's the point I made uh, when I started, to say that this is somebody who was appointed since January 15, 2019. At the time of his appointment, the day of his retirement was already known. His age was already known. So the president had a whole year to have decided on who will be the successor. So I believe because, like uh, uh, Kyle just said, probably because nobody challenged the legal extension of the uh, tenure of office of the service chiefs in the armed forces, it became then comfortable to replicate it in this instance. And I think that's why Nigerians are saying enough is enough. The fact that something is being done wrongly yesterday should not justify why it should continue today. Okay. And that's why it's important for Nigerians to rise up and challenge this in court okay. so that there will be interpretation. Mr. Okay, well, uh, one, one then yes. who wonder whether or not uh, that is going to happen, that you or anyone would want to take the president to court on that. But I was going to take you up on the one of the sections that you quoted. Section 216, sub 2, says, Before making any appointment to the office of the Inspector General of Police or removing him from office, the president shall consult the Nigeria Police Council. Talking about that council, uh, one of the challenges a number of people have raised as a result of that one is that there is no specific time of meeting for the council. It's only at the call of the president. I mean, at least that's the understanding that is out there. Could that be contributory to why, you know, the IGP's uh, agenda never came into discussion because maybe if the meetings had held, it would have been an agenda. It's something that could have been considered in time. Is that, could that be a contributory reason? No, 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 not at all. There's no basis for that. On Wednesday this week, the Federal Executive Council met and was presided over by the president. The constitution only says that the president shall meet regularly with his ministers as Federal Executive Council. So they chose Wednesdays as their statutory period weekly. And so I believe that within the Secretariat of the Nigerian Police Council, he must have an office. There is a chairman prescribed by law who is the president himself, that is governors of the states, and then the chairman of the Police Service Commission. So it couldn't be that those are just matters of procedure. And procedure cannot overrun statutory requirements to say that the meeting should be convened and then an advice should come. And look, it's so simple. Advice in law 
it's not something that is binding on the president. But the makers of the constitution feel that as an individual, just one person, it's possible that there are errors, there are mistakes. You may bypass some persons that are known to others that you never countenance. So by the time you have the benefit of 36 state governors who have the responsibility of all the areas commands, all the DPOs, all the uh, various police uh, commissions, they can properly then put in their own uh, counsel and advise the president. And then you go to the chairman of the police service commission who has the data of all police officers and can tender them before the president. It's just an advice. So I think properly uh, looking back, uh, the president has not acted well with all due respect and should withdraw the purported extension of the tenure of office of the Special General Police. And I'm sure Nigerians, activists, lawyers, students, and teachers of law should be able to uh, approach the courts for a proper interpretation of the action of the president so that it doesn't become a, pres a precedent. Maybe when we get to 2023, we may then be talking about extending the tenure of the president himself by implication. So it's important that we have a judicial determination of this so that we can continue to then oil our democracy and be guided by law at all appropriate times. Well, if that were to happen, I can assure you that you will definitely hear the voices of politicians extending the president's tenure in 2023. No, I'm sure there will have been an alarm way before 2023 expiration approaches. Uh, but looking at it, some people will say, what if the letter was uh, backdated? Or maybe the letter was already in existence, we just didn't know about it. After all, it's only for three months, just so that, you know, he can set in motion the process uh, for electing a new or for getting a new IGP? Because you must admit that somehow it does look like the process is a bit cumbersome. Do you agree? Hey, well, I agree with the latter part of your uh, comment, Malcolm, that that process is quite very, very elaborate and complicated in regard to the fact of the kind of responsibilities attached to that office. Somebody presiding over all police officers law enforcement agencies and responsible for the security of the nation. So I, I agree that the president needs some counsel, some caution. And I think that's why the makers of the constitution have given him this latitude to be able to tap from the well of the experience and wisdom of the governors of 36 states, uh, the chairman of the police service commission, and indeed the IGP himself. But addressing the first part of your uh, comment about whether a letter is already in existence, you know, I mean, with all due respect, if that letter had existed, it should have been known before February 1, when the tenor expired. So since the police um, minister, the minister of police affairs, rather, made the announcement only yesterday, the law takes it that that decision was taken yesterday. So if you write the letter and backdate it, I mean, it's so clear to all that it will be questionable. It will be clear that it was backdated for the purpose of justifying the announcement that was made yesterday. And the point we make in any case is this. That backdating will not even validate it because there is no foundation for it in law. You must have a reason. You must have a legal backing for saying, I want to extend your tenure. And the point I made while I was speaking with your colleagues in Lagos here is to say that among the serving DIGs, among the serving AIGs, there must be somebody who is suitable to hold that office for as long as the president is looking for a replacement. In all other institutions, like the EFCC, as we're challenging the president, there's been an acting officer for that organization for the past uh, eight years or so. And the organization is functioning even though we know that it's a contrary to law. So we shouldn't continue in, in those um, uh, uh, conduct to justify our actions when there's no legal basis for it, Malcolm. Well, we have seen that, you know, the style of this president, I mean, agree with it or disagree, it has been that he's been very reluctant to let people who start to work, let them go. And so the chances that, you know, he'll want to appoint somebody, um, who maybe an AIG or DIG, to just act temporarily, he might feel a burden of letting them go when eventually he decides on who he wants to head uh, an important force like the police force. Uh, do you think that could inform the reluctance uh, of the president to name somebody within the force, um, as you would expect, to be in acting capacity? Well, I think that uh, I've also, we're also entitled to look at other instances when 
the president has appointed persons into critical offices and he had had to let go of them. And so we cannot say that uh, he has a particular pattern in terms of the reluctance to let go of people who are dear to him. The uh, chairman of the board of MPA was recently removed, even before the expiration of his tenure. When the president was on medical vacation some years back, and the acting president appointed an officer to head the Directorate of State Security, DSS, uh, the person was removed even before the expiration of his tenure. The chairman of AMCOM was appointed into office by the same president. He removed him before the expiration of his tenure. So I'm saying that, yes, it's possible that there is a pattern for the president to have preference for certain persons, but also there are persons that he also appointed that he had removed if, even before the expiration of their tenure. And then the other lesson more is this. This police act was signed and assented to by the president on the 15th of September, 2020 while Mr. Mohamed Adamu was still in office. So the law itself was passed while the tenure of the IG was still extant and valid. And there's no way anybody could have passed this police act without running it through the police organization, the National Assembly, the police committees. So even Mr. Mohamed Adamu himself was aware that there is a section 18 in this new police act that requires him to vacate office upon 35 years of, awesome. uh, of service. So if we take that into consideration, it's then for us to say that the president must also align himself with the body language of Nigerians, which is to say we want to hold him to the oath of office to protect the constitution and to uphold the constitution. When the president came into office, you remember in 2015, body language seemed to stabilize electricity supply until sometime we then discover that, I mean, it didn't last. The president had to go to Germany, speak to Siemens, and also work with other stakeholders for what we now see as 12 hours, 18 hours in some areas. And so in, in most cases, the body language or preferences of individuals will not bring results. And I think the president also has a duty to learn from us Nigerians why it's office, that we don't always prefer individual idiosyncrasies in terms of public office in terms of discharge of constitutional responsibilities, we want things that are predictable. That's the essence of law, that human beings can say, if you do this, this will follow. And that's what the law is all about, especially the constitution, which creates the office of the IGP. So you cannot recourse, you have recourse rather to other extraneous factors when the law itself is so expressed as to what you can do in all circumstances. I do sympathize with the president with all due respect. Maybe he likes the uh, uh, the uh, uh, former IG, but when you look at other cases where the president has tapped on the resources of people who are close to him, people he appointed after they retired from Supreme Court as ambassador in the, to the United States of America, as ambassadors to London, even at 80 years of age. You know, so it, it, if a person is just 59, there are other capacities that Mr. Mohamed Abdamo can be of assistance or usefulness to Nigeria, even in security whether in terms of adversary capacity or even in other capacities, given his age and the fact that he's so fit. But you cannot bypass law, you know, to suit the personal preference of the commander-in-chief. Mm. I'm just, uh, you know, another thought that is uh, going through my mind about the extension of tenor. Um, you know, whether or not this... You talked about a moral burden that, you know, it's going to kill, it's going to dampen morale uh, in the Nigeria police force because, um, you know, he might not get the cooperation that he'll desire. Do you think uh, also that the appointment of, say, a DIG or an AIG would also make any difference in that regard, especially when the person is not certain of his or her tenor, uh, you know, considering the fact that he or she will just be in acting capacity. And then there is always that uh, prevaricating as to whether or not the person will be appointed as a substantive person. Don't you think that that already ruins the person's chances? And doesn't it also dampen morale even further within the force, uh, considering the uncertainty that could follow such an appointment? Well, I think that generally 
within the bureaucracy and the civil service is to say that when the person holding a substantive office is vacating that office, there's a general tendency or convention to hand over to the next most senior person in rank to the person who is vacating. So in this case, if there is a DIG who probably is in charge of A division or B division or operations, it will generally then follow to become a president to say, we already can predict what will happen when the person occupied the office of uh, IGP is vacating that office. He will hand over to the uh, next most senior person. And unless there are extraneous or extenuating reasons why such persons should not be confirmed, we should then get used to the system of seniority. We should get used to the system of rewarding people who have been loyal, who have served their fatherland. I, I would probably think that it's possible to say there's no problem in expecting that the most senior police officer next to Mr. Mohamed Adamu should be expected to occupy the office of the Inspector General of Police. That ambition is legitimate, it is lawful, it is legal. If accepted by the Nigerian Police Council, and forwarded to the president. I don't think that should be a problem for us because in any event, from the experiences we had in the past, even with the appointment of Mr. Mohamed Adamu, so many people had to be retired. So many people had to let go of their ambition, of their career, you know, just to enable him to settle down in office and be in charge of the force properly. The Nigerian police force is a security agency. It's quite very complicated. It should not be subjected to uh, 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 speculations. It should not be subjected to uh, some kind of atmosphere of uncertainty. You know, because we're talking about divisions all at, around the country. We're talking about people looking up to uh, a, a chain of command where others will come from Abuja, go to Lagos, go to Kaduna. And once there's uncertainty concerning the person giving those orders, even mm. if you issue the orders, it will only be complied with uh, invalidation. Okay. So that's what I mean to say that you know, it's to, it to dampen morale. Okay. Well, now that the president has made this announcement, according to the Minister of uh, Police Affairs, where you stand, what are the consequences of this decision of the president? And what are the far-reaching implications we are not aware of now? And uh, what do you suggest be done to avert those consequences? Well, the, the, the first consequence is that we have somebody occupying office illegally. And so that alone can spell some constitutional crisis, if not properly handled. The second consequence is this. The people who were supposed to recommend or advise the president, the governors, the chairman of the police service commission, have been neglected, have been bypassed. So... In that regard, the consequence is that whatever the person who has been appointed is doing will not be acceptable to those persons who are supposed to have recommended him, but were overlooked or sidestepped. That is the second consequence. The third consequence is to the Nigeria police force as an organization itself, up to the rank, in officers and the rank and file, is that there is no command structure that you can look up to, you know, as being the center to hold in terms of organization and operations of the police force. What do we then do? It's not so difficult. This illegal appointment was announced only yesterday. It's not up to 24 hours. Several instances when the president has made this kind of announcement and when Nigerians rise up to correct or to advise, he's been able to retrace and be able to follow the law. So what the president should do is to properly withdraw this so-called extension and then summon a virtual meeting of the governors, of the chairman of the police service commission, and look at all the officers from AIG to DIG and appoint somebody who can hold acting capacity and within one month be able to announce a substantive IG, either for the person holding the office in the acting capacity or for any other person. But certainly it cannot be to retain somebody who has retired to head an organization where he's no longer a member that uh, those things may or not happen, as you have said that it has done before. But we do thank you for your perspective this morning, Mr. Ebonlu Adegbiro, our Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure.